have to keep you guys long. But um, I'm going to attempt to just give you a, sort of like a biography of me um, using my poetry. Um, so there's no telling where, you know, I might take you, so I'm, I apologize in advance. <laughs> Why I became a poet? I became a poet because, you know, there's things in my childhood that um, I had to deal with, and the only way to express myself was um, writing my thoughts down. And it wasn't until not too long ago that I decided to let all that out. And when I let all of it out, woe to everybody. <laughs> Need a way to express, and plus, you know, poets are really dysfunctional people. You know, we take all of this function and we put it on paper and we tell everybody about them. Everybody. everybody. <laughs> so, start it off. We say what people never say. They call us crazy. Manson's long lost baby, love child. Poets rarely smile. Inner inadequacies and flaws beating in our heads daily. Sadness which stretches for miles. We express our grievances on paper. People either like you or they hate you. We try to make life and not accept the life the cards gave us. There's a curse on poets. Not too many people know this, but we carry massive mental weights of emotions, frowns covered with smiles. We are the lonely. I just set out to be a poet. Never wanted to be melancholy and alone. Future by myself, growing old. On one of those little park benches feeding pigeons, feeling insignificant. I can see the children saying it now. Look, Ma, that's that old bird lady. She's been here a lot lately. The birds and she are friends. They communicate. Wow, can't be my fate. Well, tonight I have some poems about me. Hopefully I can reach you. Now on with my little feature. Okay. <laughs> Poets Anthem. Do not place me in the grips of bondage, try to analyze me, identify me, placing me in the confines of your mind in a box to make you feel more comfortable with the idea of me. I need not to be defined by your personal dictionary descriptions of absurd words which are the wrong perception of me. My creator made me just how he wanted me to be. Unfortunately for you, it's just a little crazy. <laughs> Which one? If I had a choice to sacrifice my hands or my feet, damn, take my feet. Because writing, not writing, would be like death to me. Being rejected at such a young age, I always like search for um, and long to be loved. And I search for it in the wrong places a lot of times really wrong places. Um, <laughs> not only was like the black sheep and a lot of things, but I was like the, the ugly duckling too. So this is called Love Is. Love can be a lethal weapon. The essence of the seed of the soul, the taking over the mind and body. Love is so powerful. It can render the mightiest of wills weak. Love can make the wealthy person give up their fortune. Love can make a dying conscious have the will to live. The, lo the word love is used way too many times for all the wrong reasons. The word love comes from the mouths of people cannot, who cannot comprehend its majesty. Love was a word created by our creator's divine imagination to share with mankind, an expression of his holy composition. I wish I knew the mysteries behind the power of love which our deity poured over us. Love being said in the form of a word with the heart propelling it into an action received by another is a gift of rare commodity. So unique that one action of love isn't the same as another. It could be a tool of destruction or a lifeline. Some would rather die without it. What exactly is love? One day I would like to know what love is. I always thought I had like this weird curse on me. I never thought that anybody would like love me. Um, so I, you know, I went through this old oh, woman's me, and y'all had to suffer through all of that. 
Sorry. <laughs> this is called Luchetta's in Love. Leave me alone. Leave me alone to absorb my innocent delusions of the passions of my fading fantasies. Allow fallacies to heal my troubled heart to stop the torment and bleeding. My heart should be free from the reality that no one will ever love me for me. See, I thought he was meant for me, made for me, meant to be my salvation. He could have saved me. He could have saved my wandering soul. He could have made me whole only if he wanted to. Only if he knew the impact of what his love could do. Uh, unfortunately, I was like a two-time loser in the father arena. You know, I had a stepfather that wasn't the best. And I had a biological father who was just a sperm donor. Um, there's so many of us, I'm losing count. I'm just now figuring out what the rest of my family is. So this is called Ghost of Father's Day Past. I'm trying to wrap my mind around the thoughts of a man who doesn't exist. A ghost, a slight vision, apparition. He appeared, he disappeared. That's all a father is to me. I'm missing a man that I will never see. Santa. No good fathers are like Santa. He shared the same qualities of dead beats. You know he's around, but you never see him. You always hear him doing some shit for other kids. And he always gets the credit for this. For stuff that he's never done because he's mystical. And not only that, I dealt with a lot of broken hearts and became really aggressively angry and I hated love. <laughs> this is the angry one, 187. Aggravated assault, a double homicide, death to my heart and mind. Hot bullet tears, streams of steam down my face, a victim lying in a pool of blood, hardened blood, my lover's taste. The flesh of my heart was torn by the lies until the chambers exploded. The illusion of what was supposed to be a commitment was violated. It was like a damn rape, innocent stolen. My mental had evidence of struggles trying to keep my sanity from the lack of tenderness and occasional cuddle. My air supply was smothered by the brother who swore to love no other. It's like I was left for dead to a world without hopes of ever loving again. My compliments to the men who did a 187. I have this like love-hate relationship with people. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I hate them, sometimes I love to hate them. I don't know, I just, most of the time I hate people, but, but not y'all, I love y'all. Y'all are safe in here, y'all safe. <laughs> so this is called Beautiful. Why does my heart lead me into the places where my mind doesn't want to follow? My heart embedded with variation of intense joy, unparalleled sorrow. What is the definition of beauty? Is it something to physically hold on to? Is beauty the sound of words leaving the lips in the form of flatteries? Is beauty something to behold or see? Is it the enticement of the eyes connecting emotion to soul? Is beauty digging beneath the surface of something hard and cold? Is it revealing the radiance of something so pure or so fair? If it is true that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, then beauty is broad. There's no real definition for beauty. Sometimes confusion is what I feel, my mind trying to sort out the longings of my heart, which keeps my body and soul distance from one another, from the whole of me. I am intrigued by beauty's mysteries. I want to be beautiful. People. My grandmother always told me that you be careful how you treat people because everybody has something that God invested in them, whether you see it or not. And um, to be very careful, because people are fragile and we need to build each other up. So I wrote people. Some people are like jewelry boxes, sitting in darkness, alone in the attic, having the appearance of insignificance, blending in the background with 
old items which once was useful and important to someone, each wonderful in its own way, lay in a state of dormant and forgetfulness. A jewelry box filled with imaginable treasures and potential to bring the wearer beauty and invaluable fortune to the one who is brave and curious enough to open it. Uh, and then there's the naughty me. <laughs> so if y'all go, there's some young people here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Yo, okay. <laughs> Have to be sure. <laughs> yeah, there is the erotic side of me. I write some things that maybe people shouldn't hear. <laughs> and I find as I get older with age, you know, I get maybe it's that okay cougar thing you know <laughs> lucky for you know lucky for my boyfriend you know he gets to experience all that <laughs> audible sensations oh this one isn't too bad y'all stay for now he speaks his voice sings melodies a symphony I've never heard before I close my eyes his Words my mind explores, releasing an aura of ecstasy, sending sensations throughout my body, his rhythmic language comforting the former seduction new to me. This one's called Triple X. This is the one that I want to know. Plug your ears if you don't want to Do you want me to put it on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. You know, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just worried about everybody else, you know. <laughs> he holds me close and intimately. Like a faucet, I'm dripping rivers and private areas, running desire for him. I feel desire, I yearn. He teaches me, I learn. Nightly, we explore each other's bodies. The freaks come out at night, we're being naughty. In my thoughts and my heart, I feel his presence when we're apart. When we are together, ecstasy starts. Intense emotions, pleasurable moans, the bed in motion. We should bottle up our sex, sell it, and call it love potion. He leaves me wide open. I ride for him, or maybe it was I ride him. Too graphic, you think? Then plug your ears, close your eyes, no PG in our room. Just triple X, hot, sweaty sex. Think of what new things we can do next. So I always clap for that one. Nah, I got I cut that one short on purpose. <laughs> And okay, I have a confession. I love alcohol. <laughs> Sue me. Sometimes I keep it under wraps. Sometimes I don't. But either way, I wake up for work and I function. So, uh, you know. But I wrote this one. It's called Liquid Curse about my alcohol. See, this glass gives me the courage to face yet another disappointing day. This glass makes ugly men look good when I'm trying to get laid. <laughs> this glass makes the world around me disappear. This glass keeps my hand on my shoulders and my mind clear. After a couple of these glasses, I talk really loud. And I can tell nothing but the truth. I think. I'm not sure. Probably not really needed to be said. Can't remember what I said. But anyway, maybe this won't go too well if I was taking my meds. Come between Coke, me and Captain, something's bound to happen. I'm not an alcoholic, I'm a drug. Alcoholics can finance their habits, effects, and causes. So I guess if I was rich, I'd be an alcoholic. I hate dumb people. I hate dumb people. I just think they all should be eliminated from the face of this earth. Sit to an island with fire around it or something to just keep from, and you know what? They're multiplying. They're just, so this one I wrote for that, and I, oh, I know y'all heard this before. It's called Quarantine. 
Natural selection would have normally sought you out and eliminated you. Technology and advancements and mess through and through. Luckily for you, it saved you. What would this world be if natural selection was to run rampantly? I imagine a world very empty. Why do we spend billions of dollars to keep this, these dumbasses alive? Money, aid, technology, dumbass signs. Like, this is a real sign. I read in the airport, believe it or not, it read, do not walk in back of airplane engine is hot. <laughs> Yet that was a real sign, a sign of the times where ignorance is the bliss that people love to wallow in. If I said it before I say it again, allow these dummies to fit for themselves. They've been alive way too long with their intellectual help. Let's save this world one day at a time for those who think and use their minds. Quarantine us, help stop the spread of dumbness. Before they multiply, be more of them than us. God forbid they're closing in. Being stupid should be one of the deadly sins. <laughs> I'm concerned it seems like any more dumb people are adored, maybe even felt sorry for. Unfortunately, being intelligent will be like the raven, never more. <clears throat> and another dumb thing is this Facebook poking. I just, you know, it's like really driving me crazy. And not only that, but people who poke me in real life, you know, you know, people that they talk with their finger, they just, it just irritates me. <laughs> so I wrote a poem about that. <laughs> I have nothing to do with my time. Okay. <laughs> nothing I hate more irritates me to the core and my skin absorbed with your finger poking me. It makes me sore, something I can't ignore, you poking me. Not your Facebook poking me. You cyber assault me, cyber poking me disturbs me. Why are you poking me and where? These things I need to be aware of. What are you poking me with? What's your purpose? Poking people is the worst. Dang you curses. Poke me one more time. I will crazy lose my mind. Don't dare poke me on my page or in person for that matter. <laughs> Leave a comment in my inbox, a letter maybe. But whatever you do, don't poke me ever. <laughs> oh no, I've been going through some bizarre changes in my life. Um, I don't know where it's taking me. I'm just going along with it. I wake up one day, I might feel one way. I wake up another day, I might feel another way. But overall, you know, since the passing of my grandmother, I've been going through some changes and. When you lose somebody so close to you, somebody who was your strength, you are forced to actually listen to what they had to say. And sometimes I'm like, dang, you know, she was right. I should have listened to her when she was alive. And, you know, maybe one day, if, you know, if I make it, hopefully I'll make it to heaven. <laughs> I get to tell her that. <laughs> this is called transformation. See, I'm changing. I'm metamorphosing into something I don't recognize. Wisdom fits like fancy shades on my eyes. I'm eccentric. Confidence has transformed me into something different, and I love it. I love myself. I love the sparkle in my eyes. No need for disguises. I made up my mind to love myself. I have happiness growing and stretching. Catch, catch this. I can't be caught. Go, girl, go, is the chanting I hear inside my heart. And the beat goes on and on and never stops. Setting a stage for a new tone of magnificence and accomplishments. I'm a person who believes in divine destinies. I always feel like I'm chasing destiny. This one's called wait. Wait. I want to make it to a greener side. Feels like I'm running out of time. Tick tock, tick tock, hear the sound of my fading pride. Want to be able to form my lips to say I finally made it. The sand is like sifting to the last particle in the hourglass. Roosters are crowing, vultures annoying, appearances, the church bells blaring, time is as sparse as the air I breathe. I'm running behind destiny. 
No more time to complete, need more time to complete me. Hold up, wait a minute. Give me a second. First half of my life was painful, reckless. Second half was cleaning up the messes. I need more time to embrace destiny's caresses. Be my best and be all I can be. Somebody quick save me. Pressures are caving in. My vital signs are faint, yet I'm attentive trying to resuscitate this life I'm barely living. If I judge my life from the beginning, there will be no happy ending. People want to see me fail. Crab in the barrel syndrome. When I die, my poems will still be living. They will speak to my children of my existence. Life seeing from my vision's sight, hoping they have time for their own destiny's flight. I have to say this, vote, 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 vote. Please vote. It's very important that you vote. Um, people have died for this privilege. People have fought for this privilege. And no matter how little or insignificant we think it is, please vote. Um, it's very important. Um, I'm really, I'm really big advocate of voting. So I wrote this one in, you know, because upcoming elections, you know, I, I wrote this called Elections. Wake up or forever dwell in darkness, paying astronomical costs, content with being lost. We fail before we get started. False impressions, we were smarter. Humans failed managing humanity, poverty, hunger, chaos, and calamities, devouring purpose-filled life's destinies, journeys for many, Destruction of choice by few decisions. So vote. And what I want to leave, um, I thought about what I wanted my life to mean. I never wanted to be born, live a halfway crappy life, which I did so far. But, I've, you know, the other half, I'm fixing it up. So, you know, there's still hope. <laughs> but I never wanted to leave this earth without leaving something of myself to say I've been here and I wanted to leave like a letter for my kids so I wrote it in the form of a poem and this is what I want to leave with them when I go don't think I'm dying anytime soon either <laughs> and I don't have insurance yet so y'all just be out of luck <laughs> I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with pieces of me when you dream your dreams, travel, life, and journey. Remember my legacy. Reach for the things you imagine that are out of reach. The sky is the limit, but don't let the sky be your limit. Space is unlimited. God is omnipresent. Never miss him. Read and learn, it's your turn to make a name, pursue purpose and gain your calling. Don't be embarrassed of falling. Pick yourself up and dust yourself off. It's a wonderful view from the mountaintop. Never accept failure, never stop. People are fake, but at the end of the day, they leave when things don't go their way. Don't detour or stray. By negativity, they say, hold your head up high. The devil is a lie. Don't be afraid to ask God why. What I leave, I leave you joy, peace, and happiness. And to everybody, God bless. Wow.